Hey, hello everyone, Jay Barino here. Welcome back, playing some StarCraft 2. It's Wings of Liberty. I thought that new Folsom would be available after the last mission, but it's not, so we're going to Zill. Mobius wants us to go after another artifact on some dead world called Zill. Apparently, they sent in a specialist team, but they lost contact with them two days ago. They're bad luck, I guess. Figure we'll get hazard pay for this one. So here's the deal. This place is a morgue. Whatever used to live in these ruins up and died millions of years ago. Before they went missing, the Mobius team reported artifact radiation emanating from that big old hunk of rock over yonder. They brought a big damn laser drill to burn the way in. Laser drill? That thing's a monster. If the Mobius team had access to that kind of hardware, Think about what could have wiped him out. Reckon we'll find out soon enough, partner. So this will be the first map I don't plan on getting the achievements, because one of them is to destroy a bunch of Protoss buildings, which is not particularly challenging, but it is really time-consuming, unlike Mission 3, where it was the same amount of time to destroy the Zerg or not destroy the Zerg. And it's also against the core idea of the map as well, to wipe out all the Protoss, so we're not going to. Watch your corners, boys. We don't know who cleaned this place out. Okay, let's try not to lose anything at the beginning here. More Terran thieves. The mysteries of this place are forbidden. You will pay for your transgressions with your lives. Okay. At least we know what happened to the other expedition. Okay, damage was spread out there. Pretty good. Give me those OG campaign siege tanks. Hold up there. Those Protoss cannons will tear us a new one if we try to advance. Swan, you promised me siege tanks. Where are they? Settle down, Hotshot. They're coming. These babies will knock those cannons down from a nice, safe distance. They're ready. These do 60 damage to everything. Light armored. Everything. They're good against Archons. The only thing they're not good against is Immortals, honestly. Because Immortals have those old-school hardened shields that reduces all damage taken. Up to a certain amount. New siege tanks work just like the old ones. When you put them in siege mode, they get increased range and firepower. They can't move in siege mode, so if you need to reposition them, just switch them back into tank mode. You got it? I got it. Oh, it's old! Let's get some siege tanks deployed on the high ground. They can pound that Protoss stalker before it even gets close to us. Wait on you. Okay, there's an Archon here as well. So when I hit it with the concussive shells right away. There we go. And then the Marauder can tank the shots. No problem. Let's get up to the base. I do plan on still using the drill to destroy units. I think it'd be an interesting challenge to not destroy any units. But there's another achievement to kill a certain amount of units with the laser drill. Mobius base local net accessed. Decrypting security overrides. Transferring control of base structures to you, Commander. Fired up. 174 gigawatts. The power of the sun at your fingertips. Now get it aimed at that door and let's get cutting. Laser output is good. Drilling will take some time, but there's no other way into the temple. Sir, the Taldarim are mobilizing their forces against us. So we set a perimeter and protect the drill until we're through. I'm just glad we've got siege tanks. Okay, we probably want to take the expansion on this map. I actually usually don't, but I guess why not in this case? And we just want to start making more tanks right What's away. So let's get some bunkers set up over here. We need bunkers and siege tanks defending that laser drill. We got no chance of claiming the artifact without it. And then down here. Let's just get these set up. Yeah, right there should be fine. We have access to plus two now, finally. As I was saying, it's based on the number of artifact missions that you've done, so I think we're playing this at the right time to have access to that kind of stuff. And then, I, yeah, we start with an engineering bay, which is good. This better be good. 
Where did I set up that tank? That first tank's over there. I think they attacked from the top first. Sir, I've managed to access what's left of the Mobius Expedition sensor net. I'll route it through your map so you can see what the Taldarim are up to. It's gonna be a while so we can take this, I think, because we're gonna be non-stop building tanks. And we make British and turrets along these ramps and next to this one, and we'll be in real good shape. So I think, again, as long as we just non-stop build tanks, that's kind of the name of the game. And we'll get some turrets to help protect them from the air attacks that come every so often. And we are instantly supply blocked. Wahoo! Tanks are three supply, I think. Yeah, so it's easy to just go ahead and transfer these over. It's easy to get supply blocked on this map unless you're constantly building depots, and we don't have a lot of money. So we're going to be constantly a victim of that. So we move these guys back over here, or at least one of them. We're going to try to cram some turrets up in this little area as well. And I'd like to get those uh, British and turrets set up. They're attacking this bunker. That was nice, even though we don't have any units in it. Let's get at least one Marauder. The concussive shells are really, really useful. Okay, looks good. Defending this instead of the ramp itself does take, I mean, basically the tanks can hit everything as it walks through here all the way to the ramp, but it's, it's not going to make that big of a difference ultimately, so I'm not too concerned about it. SCV ready. Okay, and just not lots and lots news. and lots of SCVs, I think, at the beginning. Even just two tanks at each entrance is okay for now. We'd obviously like more. So as we get the resources to do it, that'll be fine. We're going to need all this gas eventually. And like I said, I will use the drill to destroy units, but I'm not going to go overboard. I think Immortals are our priority, and occasional air units. So, it should be fine in either case. But we're going to need some extra turrets to deal with that as well, if we can afford them. For now, though, I'm just, I just like to get all this set up and get more tanks. So, like, five to six tanks on each side, at least, would be ideal. And I just want to get those Perdition turrets set up. And we're going to need another... Depot here pretty soon. Okay, here comes the next attack. And tanks are going to be really, really important here. We could pull off some more SCVs to help repair. Here they come. Let's get this set up. They're leaving my repairing SCV alone, surprisingly. Okay, cool. And then more SCVs and another tank for the other side. Not this side we at least have units inside the bunker, so that's good. And we do that. We do have that upgrade that allows my units to shoot faster with the uh, with the attack upgrade. So we're gonna be getting that for sure. Interesting that they're going around and trying to hit my tanks specifically. Okay, more SCVs. We're gonna get supply blocked again if we don't continue making more tanks. Not enough minerals. Okay, and I'd like to get this loaded up. I really want to take this flippin' extra base here pretty soon, but we, again, still can't quite afford it. Okay, three tanks on each side is good enough for me, I'd say, for now. As we maybe just wait. I also want to set up... I also want to set up at least one or two turrets. So I knew that they do send more of those warp prisms around into this area. You would desecrate that which belongs to the gods. This will not be borne by the faithful. Sir, those are Protoss Archons. If they get too close, our men won't stand a chance. I'm giving you manual control of the laser drill. See if you can use it against the Protoss. All right, you heard the man. Swing that laser around. We can use it to drive back the Protoss. So, so again, I'm not worried about the... I'm really not worried about the uh, the Archons. It's just the Immortals. You can get rid of a, a couple here, but ultimately... Perdition Turrets will help against the Archons, and I'm, I, it's just the Immortals. And Concussive Shells also makes a huge, huge difference. Okay, gotcha. throw this down. More SCVs. Let's go ahead and get this. I, I don't need the extra base just yet, which is why I'm not too concerned about not getting it set up. Enemies early on. Okay, and we might get another turret to help shoot down the uh, the air units that'll be coming here very soon. So we'll get these set up. We can use mercenaries to get the optional objectives here pretty soon. Not enough minerals. So we'll just get this fully saturated and then take the second base. Uh, getting, it, getting the second base saturated will take quite a while, though. Alright, let's uh, use the drill to kill this immortal. 
There we go. And our SCVs, our Valiant SCVs are doing their best. And we'll get more tanks set up. Okay, and then we'll pull another SCV to build Perdition turrets along this side. The laser drill has breached the door's outer layer. So as you can see, we haven't really spent a lot. We haven't spent very much of the drill's time on actual units, and that's because the Protoss attacks have been pretty light. But that will change. Let's Nothing just queue up more anyway. tanks. Okay, looks good, and that's there's four there, four there. If we can get five on each side, and then hopefully take this this expansion here pretty soon. I do expect the air attack momentarily. Let's get one more turret right here. Alert. Enemy air units will approach vector. Damn it. Air units. Nothing. Those are transports. Use the laser to knock them down fast. We destroyed at least one of them. Here comes another one that's just going to flop right in the middle of our base. No problem. And this is why I set up some extra... Some extra turrets. And that'll just... That'll continue to be useful there. Okay, now we can finally set this base up. And we can start calling down mercenaries soon to go for the optional objectives. Horner hasn't even told us of their existence yet. But there's no reason to leave our base in this map, so... Except for those. There's no reason we would have found them otherwise. A couple more perdition turrets could certainly do us well. Okay. And then more tanks. I was ahead of the depot need. I was ahead of the depot need. Slightly. Sir, I'm picking up the energy signatures of several Protoss relics in the area. I'm marking them on your map. So we're going to prioritize weapon upgrades because we've got the ultra capacitors. time, we can blast them free with a laser drill. I bet Stedman would love to study them. Okay. Yep, the shrines. And I'm not worried about that. We can get those later. Uh, let's start maybe picking off some of these. Yeah, keep going for these immortals. Definitely get the immortals. And then we'll have six tanks on each side. I want to grab an armory. And yeah, this is where the Perdition turrets come in handy. They do get smoked really fast, but at the same time, they just delay that tiny bit. All right, this is done. Perfect timing. Let's get on up here and repair this. Let's go ahead and shift both of our command centers down here to start sending SCVs. And I'm trying to think if there's anything that we really need to be focusing on right now. I think we just make Perdition turrets along this area. We got this set up. And I think we need an armory so that we can start pumping out our attack upgrades for our tank. Because those will pay off immensely. So let's get a few marines to come with us and extra medics to come with us when we go for the relics. I think I've been calling them artifacts erroneously in the past. Someone's not going to be happy about that. Okay, so like that. That's good. And then don't stop making supply depots. And I think we're on like the semi-downhill spiral of this as long as we're making sure that we're shooting the really high-value Protoss units. Really just Immortals, maybe High Templar. We can, you know, take out a few of these Archons, but it's not super necessary. Okay, a few extra Marines. And we gotta make sure we don't get supply blocked because we're gonna want to get those Mercenaries out. And we're gonna keep making SCVs here and pulling them off because we have to keep repairing stuff. Immortals, please. Shift queuing is really important on this map. Not enough minerals. Okay, we got a few more tanks. What's going on? More depots, and very, very soon we're going to be able to move out and go for those relics. A lot of stuff over on this side. I am a little worried about this ground area. But we have a lot of SCVs Not that we can pull off to repair. Go ahead. Okay, yeah, here they come. And our Perdition turrets are going to go down real fast. That's the thing. So we might have to rebuild these occasionally. We could also make like two or three bunkers. Might be more effective. Okay, might be more air units at this point. The laser drill is now cutting through the door's thermal barrier. 
Okay, and we're gonna get rid of these immortals as they wiggle their way in here. They're really slow, so they're pretty easy to get. And they're gonna keep trying to kill our SUVs as they repair, as long as they survive long enough for the, the uh, tanks to just blow them up. There we go. I think we grab like a perdition turret right here, just in case they try to drop on top of us as well. Okay, it's mercenary time, I'd say. I will get Spartan Company as well. But we need a little extra money to do that. Yeah, this group should be good. We can get one more medic, and then we're going to start moving out. In fact, this group alone might be fine. This is starting to get mined out, so it's fine that we're a little undersaturated. But we've got the two extra bases, so we're in real good shape, I'd say. And I don't think we need turrets for anything. Sir, more air units inbound. We gotta take them out, or they'll keep dropping troops right on top of us. Is there a carrier with this group? Yeah, hit the carrier. Hey, hey, hey. We need that damn drill. Don't trash it. Everything else is fine. Okay, and then just keep making lots and lots and lots of tanks. What's new? Okay, so this group is probably safe to go. But let's ensure that we don't run into enemy units along the way. So here we go. SCV, you can stay. Yeah, see, here they come. This one in the upper left is harder to get to because you have to run through the enemy units to do it. So that's why I'm pretty hesitant. Here comes some High Templar. We're going to try to pick those off before they can storm. If you kill all the units that they come with first, then they can't see up the ramp and you'll definitely kill them. But the opposite can happen, where if they have Colossi with them or something, then they can kill you very, very fast. And if they storm your tanks, you're going to be in trouble. Devil Dog's leading the way. Let's go ahead and hit this shrine. Okay, we got tanks and more tanks. We need more depots. Okay, that's fine. And we got more. We got money coming out of our ears at this point, which is in real, which is real good. Okay, so we got to get these guys out of here. Let's see if we can sneak them out without them getting hit by units that are. Okay, let's wait. Let's wait. Yeah, here come more units as well. Okay, let's make a run for it. Get inside. Get inside. Spartan Company. Base is under attack. How's this side going? Again, we're taking the occasional damage. Our SCVs might get stormed, but that's not the end of the world. Okay, and we can wait for more mercenaries to go for the last two groups, or we just go. I think we'll be okay. Let's take this group. We can head over here. We don't have to worry about walking through enemy bases. And then we just make tanks forever. <laughs> Okay, and as we have extra SCVs, we can pull them off to just leave up here to repair. What do we got going on here? Again, on the lookout for High Templar, Immortals, maybe Colossi. The Colossi will start coming here pretty soon. We lost the Medic, unfortunately. Okay, no High Templar. Go ahead and hit this. You need to retain vision on this, otherwise you can't kill it. Otherwise, the laser drill, I think, stops attacking it, which is obviously bad news. We have nine tanks up here, and they'll, they'll eventually be plus two. Okay, this is done. With this group, we have to walk up this hill so we can be able to see. Thermal barrier breached. The laser drill is now cutting through the core. They seek to devour the legacy of the gods. Destroy. Ah, the tank did, it did get one storm off, which is not the end of the world. Because it didn't really do that much damage, but we can, so we can easily repair all this. We can move our tanks, like, to sit over on this side now. We can make perdition, like, eat another perdition turret just to tank the damage. Here come Colossi. I think it's worth killing this first group, because they do send a bunch of them all at once. They're not that scary, but they will almost always get some guaranteed damage on you. And actually, you know what? Nah, it'll be fine. Laser drill, just hit the... Hit the secret shrine. Base is under attack. 
Yeah, it's no problem. So let's pick this up. Our mercenary group is safe and can hang out in the base and support any side that really needs it, which at this point is, is none. This is one of those, again, like the beginning is way harder. Once you get, once you get situated, you'll probably be safe. And I don't think the Colossi will be able to do too much damage to us. The only thing is that they, they give vision. They give a lot of vision to High Templar. And if High Templar can see us, then they can storm us. And that's the only thing we have to actually really be on the lookout for. And we can also outheal the damage that they're doing. So as we've out, as we've out mined these areas, we could just pull up SCVs to to move and, and repair instead. Got a nice little mercenary group here ready to go. There's another wave of air units heading your way. These guys just won't give up. Stick it to them, boys. Okay, let's go for carriers. Carriers and void rays. Okay, unfortunately we had to wait for that to start. Alright, here we go. No problem. And then we just pull off more SCVs to repair here. We don't need to build more. We have more than enough. And just, yeah, sure, a couple more tanks. The Spartan Company would have been good to just leave in that general area, but it was fine. Okay, I think we're good. I don't even think that these tanks can even hit the units that are coming up, so I'll chance moving them a little closer. It's not. I don't think any side's going to get really broken through. High Templar, no, no. High Templar are the only thing that could cause me significant damage at this point. The extra turret health could be pretty useful here. But, again, not something that would have made this significantly easier or anything. It's just we would maybe not have to rebuild this one turret. And we actually haven't had to, so it's fine. There are no more air units. I think this one could be interesting if there was a feat of strength to not use the laser drill at all. Kind of like the mastery for the last uh, Terran epilogue mission. It's like the second to last mission in the whole game where it's like don't use Kerrigan to kill more than a certain number of units. Like just enough to kill the Void Thrashers and then that's it. But there is, a, there is an achievement to use the drill to kill more than a certain number of units here. So we're doing that. Uh, if you want to get the, uh, the Protoss... Like, kill a number of Protoss units. Uh, it's not that bad. Let's see if we can kill this High Templar. Is under attack. It's not that bad. The key is you just float a barracks, like, right over here. And you can shoot the buildings with vision on them. And, the like, the cannons and the pylons, there's a couple gateways. Just shoot those with the drill. And then the Protoss will continuously rebuild them over and over and over. And then just keep shooting them over and over and over. Alternatively, you make a big army and you use your tanks and you creep up these ramps real slow-like. And if you have Orbital Command or, or you have any sort of air units, which we have neither, you can get some vision and you can use tanks to creep up these ramps. Um, or just, you know, I guess mercenaries to tank a little bit of. But again, as I had mentioned, I feel like it's it's kind of against the, the core idea of the map. So that's why I avoided this one. And I've said it multiple times, I'm not going to be getting every single achievement, but I will get the ones that feel intuitive to the maps. Um, we did destroy all those Zerg hatcheries, but as I mentioned, that was more of a timing issue and more of a challenge based on time as opposed to just creating something that's sort of tedious that we otherwise could avoid. Mineral field depleted. Is there another one in there? Is that a... Yeah, just kill the High Templar. I don't care about the Colossi. Okay, no problem. Get back to it, drill. I do like the concept of this, though, where you have to choose one way or the other what your drill, what the drill should be attacking. I, I do quite like that a lot. Yes, come into my wall of death. The tanks are truly insane in the campaign. It rhymes. Wait a minute, that rhymes. That's another insurrection reference for you all who may not be familiar with it. But Charlie Vane lives on in our hearts and headcanon as we, uh, as we all know for certain that he bailed out of that wraith, and he is now Mad Horner. One of the most influential men in the sector by the end of uh, StarCraft II. Good old Charlie Vane. Okay, well now we sit and wait. We could have done this faster if we didn't use the drill to kill anything, and we probably could have gotten away with it. But, again, like, if we let the uh, 
see, if we had the turret health, maybe we would have survived there. Actually took a decent chunk of damage there. Which is like little things here or there, where we could have accepted the challenge of saying don't use the drill to destroy anything, and then we would have had to rebuild tanks more. We would have had to rebuild bunkers more. Just would have taken a little more attention. And frankly, some of the earlier maps I was... I, I went into like semi-tryhard mode to get some of the achievements and make it seem easier than it actually was. Those did take a lot of pre-planning to understand like where the attack waves came from and the timings of certain things. Now we're in the point of the game where I don't really know all the timings of things. I'm just sort of winging it, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to get the achievements or, or more, the more like roleplay stuff like keep the marines, the escorting marines alive. I keep using that as an example, but that's something that I'm going to continue to do if there, are if there are times that it seems like a good thing to do. I think this is when things begin to be a little bit endless. Our tanks near the ledge were destroyed. We're going to rebuild this turret. We're going to move these tanks up just a little bit. Breach of the doorway core is imminent. Structure access imminent. It is our sacred duty to stop these defiant. So if the... If the drill resets, you actually lose a lot of time for it to attack, which is irritating. So that's why ship queuing is really important. The end section here are just endless stalkers and zealots, so it's no problem. Just let the let the drill burn through the door. Even if they did break through, there's no way they'd destroy the whole base in time. We've got a whole mercenary army waiting for them if they did get through. And that should do it. You have to live for now. Word of this sacrilege will echo across the stars, James Raynor. The day of reckoning draws near. These artifacts of yours seem real popular, Tychus. What do we care? As long as the pay's good. Really? I'd say getting vaporized by the Tal Dream definitely counts as diminishing returns. Nice. Almost definitely killed 20 units with the drill. Protoss remaining. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. It doesn't even... Oh, enemy kills by the drill. killed by the drill. We did get that to, uh, to 40. And this just says Protoss remaining 118. It doesn't say, like, 118 out of 118. You know what I mean? It's that completionist-type feeling where in the Mission 3, it said 8 out of 8 hatcheries. Very satisfying. This, I don't really care if I didn't destroy other Protoss buildings. There's nothing on the score screen that makes it seem like uh, we'd have gotten a nice little number to tell us that we did it. All right, let's go to the Hyperion. Our old buddy's going to show up and be real weird and give us a crystal. And we can spend our money, of course. Four years. You show up out of nowhere. Time is oh. short. You must understand. The answers you seek lie within. Study it well. The fate of creation hangs in the balance. balance. Nice to see you too. Heard 
of these Ehan crystals before. Supposedly they allow you to relive another person's memories. And for Zara tools uncovered, he was desperate for me to see it too. Well, here goes nothing. So I might spread out the Zara tool missions and not do them all in a row. I haven't really decided yet. I see we have a new acquisition. Is it a Protoss device? That's right. But I wouldn't mess with it if I were you. It's a Kaderan Ehan crystal. It's a memory storage device. It lets you experience what other people have seen or done. It can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. Yet you don't fear it at all. You're a fascinating man, Jim Rayner. You know more about the Protoss and the Zerg than any of the experts I've read about. Sir, you... Yep, okay, he says that any time that we have stuff to spend. So, orbital depots will alleviate the pain that I have of always being supply blocked. Alternatively, microfiltering is really useful on certain missions and just completely over the top on others. Some missions we have, we'll have more Vespian that we know what, than we know what to do with, but on some missions, we could really, really use that early Vespian. So I think we're going to go for the microfiltering and just occasionally get supply block because I'm not very good. So let's do that. And we can read our, our Protoss tank update. The Protoss crystal continues to grow. I no longer think it's drawing power from the ship. It's getting pure energy from that sphere above it, which presents a new worry. What's it doing with all that power? Is it going to release it explosively? I have to keep Swan away from the sample. He'll definitely shoot it out the airlock with me strapped to it. I'm tired of scraping smaller sam- I've tried scraping smaller samples, but all my tools broke. Luckily, I found some cast-off chips floating in the tank. Wonder how they came off. In any case, the chips revealed more than the Matrix. More of the Matrix. It's keeping the energy there in a vortex. How does it move the energy so fast? It may be the fabled Protoss warp technology. For all its complexity, the Matrix is as solid as the strongest structure. Hmm. I wonder if I could apply these dynamics to our own structures. Make a note. I'm learning so much from this crystal, but I can't help feeling as if it's learning from me. If that makes sense. Late. Tired. Sleep now. these artifacts is making me nervous. Can you tell me any more about them? It's interesting. The one from Zill is different than the others. However, I think all of them once constituted a single device. You mean they make something bigger? It would seem so. It's just a theory, but there's an attraction between the artifacts we've collected. A kind of harmonic resonance. Given the points of contiguous translinear alignment, I think they'd be drawn together like magnets under the right field adjustment. Okay. Well, don't adjust anything just yet, Doc. I like them aligned just the way they are. All that techno mumble jumbo in English, Doc. Cliche. Okay. We're rocking some serious heavy metal now that we got siege tanks. Yes, sir. The comforting thunder of the big guns. Well, comforting when they're on our side. Yeah, these newer tanks have better guns when they're on the move and reinforced armor. So long as they still got the range in siege mode, the rest is just gravy. Between siege tanks and bunkers, we can hold the line against just about anything. Armor with twin 90mm cannons. The Crucio is an expensive upgrade to the original Arclight siege tanks. The 180mm siege mode shock cannon scatters superheated tungsten in a 50% larger area. Okay, do we want to spend our money? No access to orbital command yet. So I'm really waiting for the orbital command. Very, very important. Maybe after we complete one of the Zeratul missions, we'll spend our money on that. Cantina. This is Donnie Vermillion, live from UNN. Tonight, the Zerg invasion. The battle so far. The Terran Dominion is holding firm under Zerg aggression. Our industrial complex has stepped up production on all fronts. Enlistment rates have risen within the penal system, and the Marine Corps is ready to get in the fight. The Zerg won't know what hit them. Donnie, has there been any word on when we start pushing the aliens back? Kate, if I revealed that, I'd be giving away vital Dominion secrets. You think the Zerg watch our broadcast? I know they do, Kate. I know they do. Well, you heard it here first, folks. This is Kate Longwell for UNN. I mean, you don't know, Kate. You don't know. So now we've got three of these artifacts on my ship. When are we supposed to hand these damn things over? They got their hands full right now. The Zerg are about to invade Tirador, 
but Mobius' main research center is. I don't reckon we'll hear anything from them until they relocate somewhere safe. Wonderful. All right, Tosh does still talk to us, even though last time he said he didn't want to talk to us. Had any visitors lately? I don't know what you're talking about, Tosh. Oh, I think you do, James Rayner. Something was on this ship just now. I still smell it on you. Portos. Interesting. Whatever you think you know, you just keep it to yourself. I hear you yapping about this, and I'll toss you out the airlock. Wouldn't it help with morale? We're like, hey everybody, we got a visit from our old buddy Zeratul. The Protoss haven't abandoned us. I don't know. Anyway, we can get Siege Breakers now. Do we want to? We have a lot of money. I do really want to get my Orbital Command update, though, like, as soon as possible. That's not super expensive. It'd be worth it. Let's do it. As long as we can get the Orbital Command upgrade. Cool. So now we have all of our mercenaries. I do like me some mercenaries. Uh, so I think next time... Well, we'll have to go to the bridge first. I think next time we'll start the Zero Tool missions, but I'm not going to do all of them in a row. I do like the idea of spreading them out a little bit. You ain't going to believe this, but I just saw Zero Tool on the ship. Uh... How much did you have to drink tonight, sir? He was here, Matt. And he was hurt. On the run from something. Now where is he now, sir? I don't know. But he ain't on the ship anymore. He gave me an Eon memory crystal, and he was desperate for me to study it. I guess he wants me to see what he's seen. Alrighty, this has been Jay Barino. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye now.